Welcome to this episode of Jake Makes. This episode is in collaboration with my good friend Stray Hydroblade. Link to his channel there and is it there? We've been trying to do, thinking of doing a collab for a while now and we just couldn't decide on what to build. So at long last we have decided to make a project, was that a gunshot? A projectile firing thing out of PVC. I don't know what he's building, he hasn't told me yet, mainly because he hasn't decided yet. One thing I do know for sure, mine will be better, duh. We are going to be building a PVC compound bow powered by trampoline springs. Should be pretty stinking great. Hayden. Are you there? Hello. Hey, so I'm uh, about to get started on this build, you know the collab we're doing. You got your idea figured out yet? Oh yeah. So many good ideas. I just wanted to call before we start, you know, and you know, wish you good luck on this collaboration. But I feel like I gotta tell you, your YouTube channel's terrible and mine's gonna beat your project out of the water. I just felt like I needed to tell you that. Am I allowed to swear? No. Alright, let's talk about materials now. To build this, you're gonna need some one inch diameter PVC pipe. You're gonna need some black spray paint for aesthetic beautimousness. Y'all aren't gonna believe this, and I don't know if you can see my face, but I actually think I have everything I'm going to need for this project right here. You're also going to need two trampoline springs, two of these clothesline pulleys, some Gorilla Tape for the handle, more beautimousness. You're gonna need a couple of these light strap heat hinges, that's what they're called, paracord, a couple of these eye bolts with the nuts and washers, some more quarter inch bolts, and two of these rope hooks. Should be everything we need. Let's talk design. That is my idea for this. You can see we have trampoline spring there, trampoline spring there, pulleys there and there, pulls back. Now, the only possible problem I can foresee with this is if these two trampoline springs are too strong, like the bow's too strong at that point, I will modify to the design and instead of two trampoline springs, I do one trampoline spring stretching to each of those hooks. Now you might be wondering why I would do the compound bow design since I'm not doing an actual cam where it has a let off in pressure at the end, I'm just doing rollers. I'll explain that at the whiteboard. Here's the reasoning behind a compound bow. Basically it's to get a shorter bow with the same amount of draw length. In times past in history, you had the longbow, which was a super long, really large, tall deal. It was generally around six stinking feet in length, and it would only get drawn back to about there because it's so big that it was a full draw. Now, the problem with bows in general is trying to get them more and more compact inevitably means they're gonna be less and less powerful. Just by default the way the mechanics works. So then you had the recurve bow, which was invented to solve a bit of that problem. If you look at it, it actually has a much longer length if you were to uncurve those recurve. That curve gives you more draw length for the size of the bow. The compound bow 
is basically your recurve bow on steroids. See, with a compound bow, you can have a very short bow, say, three foot bow. Because of the pulleys on this one, you can have it be super small, which at the same thickness, no one could pull back this long bow, say if it was this long, same thickness of wood, you could not pull it back that far, it would be physically impossible. However, if you add pulleys onto it, the mechanical advantage allows you to be able to pull it back. That's the brilliance behind the compound bow. And that is the mechanical advantage I'm seeking with this bow. I want to make a very, very, very compact bow, but I also want it to be very powerful. Logical choice then is to use the compound bow design with the pulleys to give me that mechanical advantage to make it work. Let's start out by cutting our one inch diameter PVC pipe into three sections. One section a foot long and two sections 15 inches long. One foot. Actually, instead of trying first to do the two springs, I'm first gonna do the one spring idea because it's easier to switch it around to make it work with two springs, then to start with two springs, then go to one spring, because then we'd have extra holes and whatnot. The idea is this right here. What we want to do is measure five inches from one side of your main bar and make a mark there. Keep that mark there. See what we got here. Here we got it laid out. You see, that's where the five inches, that's where you want to line it up, right with the end of that hinge. And without planning it, we have just enough space to attach these hooks perfectly. Some assembly required here. Would you guess what? Now I have to cut all these bolts off with a handsaw. <laughs> assembled there. <laughs> Alright, I'll go ahead and say I've noticed one bit of a problem already. See how that hinge is bent there? These small hinges, I got small ones so they're thin enough so that they can fit in there, but the gauge metal is pretty small. Hopefully it still works. If not, I can go and get some thicker, heavier duty hinges. The problem with these pulleys by themselves is you can see they have these little aluminum insert in there. And we've got these one quarter inch bolts. What you want to do is be able to slide it on and it be able to spin on it freely. Problemo is it doesn't go on enough and it doesn't spin freely. So we're gonna have to file down the diameter of these to get it to fit on there and slide good enough. Oh yeah, there we go. Hmm. Can't believe that actually worked. <laughs> okay, so here's where we're at at the moment. I went ahead and uh, strung it up real, what the? And the problem has made itself evident. Watch what happens if I go ahead and try to pull it back.
just completely twisted all out of whack. Yeah, hinges was a stupid idea because all hinges have this slight amount of play, as you can see. That amount of play doesn't seem like much on the hinge, it's, you know, a tiny fraction of an inch, but when you stick it out on a long bar, you've got quite a considerable amount of play, which when you subject it to the high pressures of the springs, ends up making the bow all out of whack and it won't work. So, plan B. Boy, oh boy, don't we love it when I mess stuff up and gotta start over again. 15 inch ones and then the middle one since we need to do the uh, hinges built in we're gonna go 16 inches instead of a foot 16 inches instead of a foot heat form PVC you are gonna need a big bowl of cold water you're gonna need a rag and you're gonna need a heat gun Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. Sweet, so much better. Doesn't feel quite right. So I'm just not happy with the way this is working. The spring is too light at the beginning and gets too heavy at the end. I just don't really like it that much. And while it does work like this, I think I can make this bow better if instead of this spring, I use some slingshot rubber. I think that'll just make it better overall. So I'm gonna do that. Much better this time. Here's how to string this thing. Get yourself six feet of paracord or whatever string you're using. Actually more like five and a half feet. You're gonna take this and you're going to tie a bowline knot in the end of it. I don't really feel like teaching you exactly how to do a bowline knot. I'm just going to go ahead and tie one. And there are plenty of other wonderful knot tying tutorials on YouTube. I like bowline knots because it allows you to make a fixed loop that won't ever come loose. Let's take that one end, stick it through one of the ends, loop it on top of the other one. That'll be the string we pull on. Pull that across and hook it on that side there. Pull it tight. You're gonna see where we're gonna want to loop the next one. Then we're gonna tie another bowline knot at the length we need. Then we can hook that on. Boom! Check out how I did this. I put the nut there that tightened these two down. Then I put a washer in between, then another nut. That gives me the perfect hook to hook that loop on. This thing turned out pretty sweet, I must say. I'm 
really amazed at how small, how compact this bow is. There's a hair in my mouth. That was my goal going into this, was to make a super small, compact bow, and in that I succeeded. It's super easy to make. Y'all can all make it at home with the tools you have at your house. So yeah, that's pretty awesome as well. Well, Jaden, I hope whatever you concocted is as cool as this. He hasn't told me what he made yet. He sent me a picture and it looks ridiculous and terrifying and ridiculous. Yeah, I have no clue what the heck that is. I'm guessing an air gun? I have no clue, but it looks stinking awesome. Be sure to go check out the link in the description for his video. Go watch him, subscribe to him. He builds some cool stuff when he's feeling like it. And on that note, thanks so much for watching this episode of Jake Makes. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. Until then, go get off your behinds. Get off YouTube. Go build something awesome. Go do something awesome with the brain in your head. And I will see you next time. Jake out.